Okay, so I'm here with, introduce yourself. I'm Coke LaRock, I'm the first MC of hip hop. I'm the one who came out of 1520 with Cool Hurt. Now way back in the days when hip hop began, with Coke LaRock, Cool Hurt, Cool Hurt, these boys ran to the latest jam. Um, okay, so where where you grew up at? Where you? Uh... I grew up in the Bronx. I'm born in the Bronx, I'm Bronx born. I grew up really on the east side between Home Street, Prospect, and over that way. Then I moved to the west side when I was like in the sixth grade. That's when I started meeting other people, started realizing they was having like talent shows and stuff. Uh -huh. And that's how I met her on the west side, but I met him through a young lady, you know, but I always hung on the west side. Her, her car, I guess, hung on the east side. So you say you was born by Prospect? I was born on Home Street between Holmes? Union and Prospect. Union and Prospect. 827 Home Street between Whoa, Union okay. and Prospect, okay. right okay. down from Morris. Over there, that's where I came from. I you, was born there. And you lived there till you was... I lived there till the sixth grade. Say I went to public school. I went to public school 99. Then in the sixth grade, I, my mother moved to the West Bronx, Jessup Avenue. Jessup. Then yeah, I okay. went to 82, junior high school 82. And that, that molded me into a young, young man growing up. Okay. But the West Bronx was, you know, like I said, I grew up over there. Okay, so what what high school you went to over there? I went to Alfred E. Smith. I could have went to Taft, Smith. but I thought I wanted to, you know, I wanted to mess with cars. And right. Alfred E. Smith was automotive. Right. But once I got there, I found out that really I like to drive cars. I didn't want to fix them mm. because at the time, then they, they only took like out of a thousand people, they only took two to General Motors or something. So the odds didn't add up for me. So then my last year, I said, well, hell, let me get out of here. And I went to Taft my last year. Alright, um, was that your, like your neighborhood school, Taft? Yeah, Taft was my Taft zone, school. zone school. I'd had to go there, if anything. But like I said, I thought I wanted to take up automotive, and then I found out I really just like driving cars, you know? Okay. Okay, so, um, so in, in high school, Alfred E. Smith, um, I read that Herc went there, too. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, I used to see Herc pass through the neighborhood. So then, you know, we used to just holler, what's up, what's up, what's up? And then I got into a fight in school one day with a cat. And um, Herc came, and I had a couple of other my boys there. So they came in. And once Herc, like, he had my back just as well. So after that, you know, I felt, okay, we, we really tight because he kind of, he was looking out. And then I told him, yo, come hang out in the neighborhood with me, man. Because I used to see him always ride by with a fixed bike back then in the 70s. Herc had a fixed bike. Very few people ever had that. And I used to say, yo, where you be coming from? He right. said, I used to be doing 26 miles down uh, Central Park. And I looked down like, what? <laughs> you riding that now, long? Now, wait a minute. Now, when you say you used to see him riding a bike, that was on Jessup over there? Nah, I used to play in Ogden Park, right Ogden. there off the bridge. That's where I used to play basketball at. Okay, that was your neighborhood That was park? my, I mean, I went there. I lived closer to 104, which okay. is between Nelson and 174. That's okay. closer to Jessup. That's my home park. Okay. But as I started playing basketball, got a little older, I went to Ogden Avenue. It was more run there. So I started playing there and kind of took over that part. And that's when you see her. That's when I used to see her drive by. And I said, yo, you play basketball? So he said, not really, you know, but he was a fit guy. He's strong, you yeah. know. So like I said, he came from Jamaica. He's athletic, very athletic. He could very jump athletic. over the basket. You know, so yeah, I heard that. we start learning a little bit, you know, and I start showing him a little bit how to play a little better. You know, because okay. Herc could stick your jump shot. You know, I was like, that ain't legal. <laughs> That's okay. how high he jumped, you know. But I could jump myself, you yeah. know. No, I'm five eleven, but I dunk on a cat six seven. Mm. I had up, so you're looking at me, but I, I two hand manny goat on you everything. Earl Manigault, Manigault. the goat, right. greatest of all times, basketball. His name is Earl Manigault. Everyone, everyone knows him simply as goat. Listen, a goat is like this tall. Okay. That nigga jumps to the top of the backboard, man. Mm. To the top. I two-hand man, he goes on you everything. Mm. So I taught him a little bit how to get his game together. All right, so you know what I'm trying to understand? You know, you know, I shouted you out in a video back in February. In the Buster Rounds video, I shouted you out. Because back then, it didn't seem like you was getting too much credit. I or, wasn't. Right. I wasn't. You're telling the truth. Right, but since then, I've seen you <laughs> resurfacing. No, no, like I said, I, I, I didn't hold... I didn't hold this thing personal, and it's not personal because 
All you're getting from me is the 70s, man, when nobody was there. You understand? We molded hip-hop. Guys can act like it was glamorous and all that. It was only 50 cent and 25 cent when, mm. when, when, when this hip-hop so-called started. Uh -huh. That wasn't the biggest thing on the block. The drug okay. niggas playing ball or whatever, your family, it was nothing about hip-hop. I remember I played at three, four parties and I was talking and the people was like, yo, who are you? And at that time, I didn't even have a name. I didn't want my name on paper because I'm hustling. Like I said again in the Bow interview, I just let people know I was a hustler. Oh. And I came with this, but I molded it, and I guess the trend of talking and all that just came in the rap. Okay. Like I said again, I ain't never write nothing down. I just call it freestyle. Whatever type of motion I was in, it. I did it and talked it. Right. That's like, um, I, let me get finished the thought, though. What yeah, I was saying ahead. is that, um, I got to come back to that, too. But um, what I was saying is, I've been seeing you like, yeah, 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 surfacing, yeah, and I yeah, want to thank yeah, you for yeah. even mentioning Mario, yeah, Chuck yeah. City. And then you go over to some other guys, the Chuck City crew, Disco King Mario, who passed away, and they used to be Chuck, Chuck City. So thank yeah, you yeah. for even mentioning Mario, yeah, Chuck that, City. That, this is the black. part I'm saying. Right. To me, Mario got what I got. They almost tried to erase me, man. I went to Cali. They said, Coke LaRock, who that? That's mm. I heard he was a myth. I said, no, he ain't no myth, I'm real. And I'm gonna tell you about that LaRock. LaRock, I named my son middle name is LaRock. His name is Dante LaRock. He's like 40 and change. He's born in the 70s? Yes, yeah. I named him at the executive playhouse when we was playing. So again, I was before my time. And then why after me? If I'm Coke LaRock and my son name is Dante LaRock, where did my friend, he said, Coke, can I get your name, LaRock? His name is Butchy LaRock. Butchy LaRock, very well known back in the day for doing his thing. He's, he's also a friend of Coke LaRock. His name is Butchy LaRock. Mm. He's around. He oh, I think he, I met him. Yeah, you had to meet yeah, Butchy yeah. LaRock. Yeah, okay. Then after him, it became another guy, Ice LaRock. Then the T LaRock, mm. K LaRock, Doc LaRock, Scott LaRock, the 9D LaRock. They got rocks all around here, man. So again, if I wasn't that cat, you don't take a cat name. Right. Then why everybody ain't cool hurt? Right. They put little cools on their name. Right. I ain't gonna name the cool guy. Okay. But La Rock, right. that's my that's patent. That was a creation. That was a dream I had. Mm. Cannabis dream going to Mexico mm. once again. Was you La Rock before you started uh, MCing? Yeah, like, no, 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 I wasn't. I was just called Coco. That was my oh, nickname Coco. on the block. Okay. But as I got older, I didn't want the guys calling me Coco. The girls could call me that, right. but not the guys. And then, like I said, what really made the name thing come? Her father gave me a name, Nasty Coke. You know, as I started playing and stuff, and you know, it was cool. But you can't give me a name to me myself. I don't care. I'm, I'm starting to get money. I'm doing what I do. And then again, like I said, I'm swinging with hustlers all the time. And when Herc battled Pete DJ Jones was, again, this is what let us take over the city. What year was that? That was in 70. 70? Yeah. Herc battled Pete DJ Jones at the Executive Playhouse. And this is what people... That early? It 70? was that early. That's when Pete owned disco. Pete tore everything up. Pete was controlling the brothers. But you have to have shoes on. This is what cats again fail to realize. We made it possible for cats to wear sneakers. I wore Pumas. I wore all flavor Pumas, just the same way dressing, looking. I shopped at AJ Lester's. I okay. wore G Money clothes. Wait, 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 wait. Let's wait. Go. We go. I want to bring it back. I want to get a full understanding. Okay. Um, okay, so you went to uh, Alfred E. Smith. You lived on Jessup. Yes. Now, when you was before, before Alfred E. Smith, growing up, because from my understanding, most of the Bronx was dominated by Caucasians. What about the West Side? The West Side was, it, it was mixed. It was you mixed. You know, it was mixed. Like, like, we had a little bit of everything on the West Side. You had, you had some Jewish, you had some Italian. You know, like I said, a lot of guys, and I just said it in one of the videos that I just did. Uh -huh. A lot of guys couldn't say their nationality because it wasn't a lot of them. Right. Like I said, I met a Dominican kid, my man Ray Rome. I had uh -huh. a fight, some guys wanted to jump me when I got out of school, uh -huh. they started speaking Spanish. And Ramon said, Coke, get ready, they gonna jump you. And I looked at him, he darker than me. I thought he was country, cause that's all I knew. You knew country, you knew a, a light-skinned guy, remember? And my era was light-skinned black. You know, you either dark or you light. You know, you either Smokey Robinson or you Bill Crosby, one or the other, or, or however that go. Right. But guys that was Cuban and this and that, they didn't say who they was, cause they didn't have nobody here with right. them. Right. I didn't exactly. know Huck was Jamaican for almost a year. 
I'm not wow. talking. People didn't bring people to their house. You didn't bring people to your house, man. So, so okay, they call it the... Um... Called white flight. Called white flight. As we moved in, uh, white folks moved out because they were afraid of what our families represented. People to me, they Caucasian. Okay. So, Caucasian people... Was they dominating the west side of the Bronx? Yes, like they was yes, dominating yes, over here? Yes, because, Was it Caucasian yes. gangs over there? I mean, the only one I knew at that time was the, the Fordham Baldies. Fordham that Baldies. was in the Warriors. The Fordham Baldies. And that was a Caucasian gang. But they had a couple of blacks mixed in, couple just of, like okay. wherever you was at. You know, just like you couldn't go in Little Italy back then. Yeah. They run you out. Did, did you go through any racial issues? You or your crew, Yeah, yeah, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't go places. Like you couldn't go in Little Italy. You couldn't go in Little Italy. Then you couldn't go in certain parts of the That's Bronx. around Fordham, you mean? Yeah, right in between Art Avenue. Right, that's where it's at. Right. You couldn't go in there. They'll run you out of there. They'll run you out of there. But they only had like a six block radius. Right. The same way my area well, was a lot of gangs. You couldn't come you couldn't come over here. Cause stop yeah. and, and the yeah. other one into crime. Right. I've been to the valley when they killed a couple of cats in the valley. Not as saying, but this is just growing up. You uh -huh. couldn't run in neighborhoods unless somebody knew you or you really had you knew somebody, right? So, okay, so was the Caucasian gangs, like, okay, you said Arthur Avenue, but that's a little further away from Jessup. Yeah, no, that's right? totally far, but in that so, era, you had gangs moving around. Like, the ones I seen on the west side, but they wasn't, the part I came up on, 174th University, you might only had, like, five or six guys that was connected with a gang, not full force a gang, because on that part of town, to me, a lot of people was working. So a lot of working class people, like my mother, I could, I wasn't allowed to be in a gang. I wasn't allowed to wear a, dung, a dungaree jacket. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the structure was different. Just like a lot of people over there, they fathers and mothers had money. We didn't live in the ghetto because I, I don't believe we all live in it. It's a, it's a name, they just call it a ghetto because we're black, Puerto Rican, no. Middle class, black man, a lot Young, of people over there, yeah, their fathers and mothers had money. Mm. A lot of guys that lived on that part well, of town right. was the money niggas in Harlem that mm. was getting money. Mm. Those were their kids. I knew cats in my class had six, seven level coats. I had one. My mother was layaway. They had money. Guys was coming to school with two, three hundred. They twelve, eleven. Okay. So the west side was a little different. A little different, right. You yeah, know, yeah, not yeah. taking none away from the east side. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was born there, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't abandoned buildings like that yeah. where you had nothing to do but be in the game. Oh, I'm not okay. challenging the game. Right. I'm just saying what was proper for me. Right, Same right, way right. in the seventh graders, when the sixth graders, when I got introduced to seeing people doing drugs. I'm in the sixth grade. My friend sniffing heroin. Was it shoot? It was still. Then his brothers and them were getting money in the street. So, so, Jessup, I'm trying to understand. Jessup to is put right there Jessup between, what? it's right there between University and McCoon's Road. Okay. It's only a three blocks. Okay. Right. Riverbed Lane is really three blocks long. Okay. But some of the biggest hustlers to a degree. Was, was it, was it gang infested nah. over there? Nah, it was, it was money infested. It was it was money and right, they right, started right. loose joints over there. My brother sold loose joints and he okay. was with Sasa. Sasa and my brother Parky was, was the loose joint. A younger than making y 200 a day selling loose joints. Wow, then cats wow, on the wow. block that's selling deuces and trays, they making that other money. Okay. Right, so that's that's the thing I'm I, I'm actually learning that the West Side had a maybe a maybe a different dynamic. They did. They did. Then oh, over here. The same way we I mean back then you had a night center, day center. You uh -huh. go to the day center from four to six, or uh, really from three to three to three to five, then from six to nine you go to the night center. Okay. Where you go play ball and all that and you know all that growing up. And then on the west side, like I said, they had like a lot of parties. They had church parties. They had about three churches over there. Who was DJing those church parties in those? It's just somebody playing music. That, that's playing, why I said again, oh, it wasn't fashionable. Oh, it that's why fashionable. cats act like everybody was on the turntable at the same time. You ain't even called your name out. You couldn't even talk. When you was a DJ, you was a mobile DJ. You played for somebody. So when you come, half the time they give you a list. That's why I said it. it I broke through that barrier. We, I, we played at City Mission on 170. We played for them one day, and I was playing, and I'm talking. By then, the crowd, they loved me, and we got our thing going. And the people came up to me and said, yo, hold up. Stop all that talking. Who are you? And 
I, I didn't. I wasn't Coke La Rock then, as of yet. And I said, yo, I'm her partner. They was like, well, we didn't pay for you. Stop all that talking. So now people coming and they're like, yo, Coke, you playing? And I was like, nah, they ain't letting me play. So now the crowd's getting upset. People starting to feel crazy. Like, fuck that, Coke ain't playing. Blah, blah, blah. So I said, Herb, how much it cost to rent this place? It was like 450. I'm walking around with 1700 now. We put the money up. We made 3000 for them. The next two weeks, we gave a party there. We made $8,000. We was making G money then when cats didn't know about mm. what we was making because we never told nobody once again. And this is what years you talking about? This is 73, 74, 75. Them wow. three days, yeah, we was at the top of our game. We yeah. was making at least 12000 14000 I remember mm. coming out of spots. We told her father, you want us to go right there, get down and buy your car? You know, people didn't realize. That's why, again... Like I said, I was walking around. I was a G-Money man, like I always said in my rhyme, who I am. Right. Okay, so, okay, so the parties. Now, I'm trying to get a clear understanding, a better understanding of it. Because, from my understanding, listen to Hurt, what he said. Hurt said that he started um, putting the breaks together. I started out with, you know, the, um, leading back, James Brown, clap your hand, stomp your feet, boom. I had to come up with Bonga Rock. Bonga Rock was still no, 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 no vocals in it. And I would go into Baby Yui. You know, the Mexican. Herc said that he started um, putting the breaks together. He would take the breaks from this song, put them with that song. He would extend them, make them longer for the, for the teenagers dancing. Yeah. Now, how did you fit into that? I, I fitted into that because I played, really my side of hip hop was the R&B side. Okay. I came in with the R&C beats, T plays it cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I played that, I played, I, played, I played a lot of, I was playing Scorpio, I was playing different sides, I was playing Michael Henderson, I was playing Marvin Gaye. When were you was playing? playing? He was DJing at his party? I DJed. At his, at, I DJed. So it was your party, it wasn't his party, it was your party. Right, but I'm saying, I DJ from the beginning. I let them tag me oh. as MC. You was DJing from I the beginning? I DJ. I DJ. When Herc up before I DJ. I DJ with Herc. Okay. I came in, he was like, what happened with that was one day his family went away, whatever, whatever. So he wanted to take his lady upstairs. He said, Coke, can you play the music for me for a while? I was like, cool. I've been going to clubs. I'm in there. I'm selling weed out the room. And once I locked the door, now I'm in there by myself. You knock on the door, I serve you, but I'm playing music. And next thing I know, Three hours went by, Herc knocked on the door, and I opened up, and he was out there dancing. He said, yo, you can play this music. Mm. And I was like, of course, I know music, because he know I could dance. I wasn't a b-boy, but I could dance. I mean, I went contesting. What, what kind of dance was y'all doing? I mean, you know, they was, I, 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 the names, I can't holler on names, because I create my own style, because like on the west side, if you copy the guy's dance, he want to beat you up. That's how serious they took that dancing on the west side. Because oh, yeah? everybody wanted to be entertainers. So if a guy thought you took his move, he want to beat you up the next week. Wow. So guys, you learned to create your own moves uh -huh. because you might get beat up. You know, but that's how that came about. So you said he asked you to, to, uh, to DJ the party. Right. Now, this was on his equipment. Yeah, Did you yeah, have your, yeah, his equipment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and this is why you was rapping and everything. This is no, the whole... Like I said, it, it, all, it all revolved through that. Because, like I said, I'm in the room, and what happened was, you know, I'm calling my team names out. You had guys, had everybody had AKA. But y'all didn't have a, a name for your crew at that time, did y'all? Nah, nah, we didn't have a name, period. Because, right. like, everybody wasn't the same crew. You dig what I'm saying? Okay. We knew everybody. Right. Now, my crew was the night crew, the guys hustling. The guys I was around in the daytime was regular guys. You know, just like I hung with guys, you could say nerds, but they just couldn't fight. Smart did, as hell. Did you have a, like, who was, was you, so you was the leader. You was, no, a, no, was I, you I, the I, main I, man? No. The main man was a guy called Mark Walters. Never Mark said Walters. it. Mark Walters was okay. the head guy. You know, as so Herc wasn't the main guy? Nah, not at all. Herc was just a friend like me, through me, knowing a friend. Okay. But the head guy in our team was a guy called Mark Because Mark. the narrative, the narrative, the way that, the way it's being said on the internet and the media is that 
Who heard brought toasting on the microphone? I don't know if you know what toasting means. No, it's no, MC on the it mic. Down, that, again. That he brought that over here, and that's what started hip hop. I mean, then, then that other man, he made me. Right. Did no, he sir. tell you, yo, no, get no, on the nobody microphone told and start? Nobody. Like I said again, okay. I was her partner. Okay. I walked and talked. That's why I said again, I was never a stepping stone. I wasn't trying to be cool her. Cool her wasn't trying to be cool the rock. Okay. He introduced me to the system and really how to handle it. Oh, okay, okay. That's what he did. First time you saw a system. Yeah, two turntables. Okay. All that. Like I said, it was very exciting. Like, and it okay. was loud. And once I learned just where to place the needles, because we didn't even have a cue in. That was right. That was his first system, right? That was his With first the system. Columns. The columns. Yes. Right. That was just okay. Just a PA system, really. That I a found PA out now. A PA system. Then he built the Herculoid. Oh. Because okay. I said to him, Herc, what you trying to do with this? Because my team was like, Yo, coach, the fuck you doing with that music? Like, right. Especially with that little money there. I was right. like, Yo, that's my partner. Leave that alone. Man. You respect me, you gonna respect him. So I introduced him to the street. Man. No disrespect to him. That's Herc. That's my partner. Right. But that's how we wrote. Right. You know? Right. So once they, they got adapted to me, and once they they start feeling good, because once they come to the party, I call their name out. Right. That's when cats start putting their head up a little more. So you introduced them to the streets. Yeah. What singled out Herc as a DJ was his keen eye for crowd reaction. He noticed that the energy on the dance floor hit a peak during the instrumental breaks in the records, the point when the singing stops and the music carries on. Because nobody, they were just playing disco. Guys wasn't putting beats together. Well, right, it wasn't everybody, beats together. Right, right. that's why I said again, this true story. Right. Everybody, since they get paid, everybody can lie. Right. They're the Lion King. Glory okay. Steelers. Okay. That, okay. That's the title. There's hip hop's in me, man. Okay. But listen, I don't, I don't know like who you're referring to in your mind, but on this side we have people who was doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? I of don't course. know if you was no, you no, familiar with? No, no. The only one I was familiar with was Mario. Oh, you was familiar with Mario. I'm very familiar with Mario. You know what I'm saying? This is why I said like not taking nothing from the Zulu Nation and bad body in there, but when Herc used to come over on this side, I remember he, him and Mario was cool. We always did something in that That's gym and split the gym in half. Mm. But Wait, we knew. 123? Yeah. Wow. But I knew we had the equipment. Right. Nobody had the equipment. They used nobody to have to had. get like nine, ten guys equipment. Oh, you say Mario didn't have the equipment at that time? Nobody had the equipment. Nobody I don't had. care. Nobody. Well, Cool DJ D had the equipment. Not then. Who's Cool DJ D? Right. See, you don't know okay, Cool DJ D. Okay, that's what I'm just saying. I'm Cool DJ D. And I'm DJ Tyrone Mixologist. This is the Macintosh. Right. Usually take two people to carry this. We usually, I used to try to have wheels. Why? I used to hate when I had to go upstairs with this. Because it's heavy. Very mm -hmm. heavy. Mine's is made in USA. There are ones that are made after mine. So that the ones after 1973 mm -hmm. or 74, 75, I think. The ones later on, they start making in Japan. Which, you know, the, the things inside of it, the... Uh, transitions is not as good as the ones that were made in America. Mm. Yeah, so. so you saying you had this in 1973? Yes, I did, buddy. Yeah. Oh, you saying Mario didn't have the equipment at that time? Nobody had the equipment. Nobody I don't had. care. Nobody. Well, Cool DJ D had the equipment. Not then. Who's Cool DJ D? Right. See, you don't know okay, Cool DJ D. Okay, that's I'm just saying. But right, I'm just he's saying. the one that put Mario on okay, as far but, as equipment. Okay, well then again, we was running with the right. Macintosh and the techniques when cats and didn't have turntables so wait, wait, to go back so, with. So wait, you think that Cool Herc was the first with the Macintosh? I, I, I would just say as a young cat, because it was going 1800, From 2000, your perspective? From my perspective. He was the first with the Mac. I, I, as I felt, I okay. didn't see, again, I didn't follow that's fair. deeply. That's fair, that's, that's fair, that's fair. So, you know? so, right, but now, what if it, is the truth that he was not the first in the streets with the Macintosh. Why did Herc go and buy the same equipment that we had? What equipment was that? I had GLI, GLI. mixer, he got GLI mixer, he got a different model, what was GLI? He had um, um, GLI, I had GLI speakers, he got GLI speakers. I had a Macintosh amplifier, he went and got Macintosh amplifier. So you would say y'all was the first ones bringing out the outside jams? Mm -hmm. The yeah, big I, I monster. Just, they said Herc, but I disputed that. Herc never 
Now, Herc used to get mad at me. Okay. D, why you playing outside? Herc used to get mad at me. Okay. D, why you playing outside? You don't make no money like that. You messing it up. You know, wow. People see you, you can't make no money. That's what you keep telling me. What if it is the truth that he was not the first in the street with the Macintosh? Oh, I can, I can accept that, brother. I can okay. accept any of that okay. because okay. there's always somebody in front that you don't know. But on that level there, uh -huh. why is people now trying to step in that position when they wasn't picked up then? Well, their, their, you know, their story again? is a lot like yours. Right, like, right. you see, right, right. They got right. X'd out the history. Right. You feel me? That's the <laughs> right, part that, right. like I said, love is North, North Carolina. Right. Cool DJ D's from North okay. Carolina. Mario yeah, from yeah, North right. Carolina. I heard cool your your right. family right. is from? They from North Carolina. Your family? Yes. Right. Mother and father? Yes. Okay. But, but I'm Bronx born. Right, right, right. Like we said again, right. you know, you came from down south. From, right, it's our lineage, you know, right. But like you said, in, in the position part, everybody play a role, but to, to bring out that style and, and to be talking, because who was talking with them then? Mary, oh, oh, oh. Well, who was I really think... MCing on a level of MCing? Mary, right. putting oh, shit together. Oh, oh. And Mario was using your equipment? Right, he was talking on the mic. Right, he was talking on the mic. Mary, Disco oh, King, oh, oh. Mary, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And that Echo Box um, was something that always, everybody was fascinated. He was the only one with it at that point. Disco Mary. King, Mary, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, Who was I really think... MCing on a level of MCing right. and putting shit together? Right. Well, I, I don't know how much right. talking Mario was doing. But they was chuck, chuck shit up. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, right. And I loved it. Like I said, right. I didn't I didn't have a problem till guys start having hate toward me just because I'm with her. Mm. I didn't like that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, come on, man, we people. All right, so I want to get this straight before we get into something else. So from your perspective, Mario came out after her? That's when I noticed him. That's when you noticed That's him. That's when I noticed him. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? After. That's when I noticed him. Like on a level of like, on, on that level, you know, like there. Because you had a lot of guys to me, they had no equipment. So right. you could be there, but if you didn't have the sound system to be at these spots, like I said again, we played at the Twilight Zone. And, and I put it in a rhyme a little bit. We played at the Twilight Zone. We became men of our own. This is when me and Herc separated where I had to play. Is that Herc the first to, place you went? Yeah. Twilight Zone? Yes. Then from there, we went down to the executive playhouse. We called it the exec. Okay. That's where we started demanding respect. You understand what I'm saying? We start letting people know, listen, we're getting this money. You got to pay to get in. You know, artillery-wise, we got deeper. And then we took it serious. We, we was on BLS then. Back then, we, we did a Christmas party. Then we went to the park side, which was a Harlem thing because my people was down with it, the three M's. They gave a dance, so that's when Harlem came up there. I mean, your all people, the big your people. Yes, yeah. my people. So, I mean, like, I, I, what, we was, we, like I said, right. we're men of our own. Right. Never with right. a stepping stone. Right. Herc is Herc. Right. But Coppola Rock is Coppola Rock. Okay. And again, Coppola Rock was a different kind of guy. I'm Bronx born. I do the things they do. So y'all, y'all, okay, so y'all was in a, um, a lot of the nightclubs. The DJs over here was more in the park, in the projects. Okay. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, but so, we got out of that kind of quickly after Cedar Park, you know, really. Because we did three parks. It, nobody talked about Tab High School, right? Tab High School. Cool Hugs played on Tab. We did Tab High School. We filled Tab High School that year, that that day. We filled the whole schoolyard. We filled Sheridan Avenue. We filled 170. And we had, like, they had the, some gang was out there then, the, the uh, Javelins or Reapers or something, something. Yeah. Or the Chingling. But hey. they, they guarded our set. But, you know, because they just said play Macho Man once every hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So then it was a guy in the audience. Mm. He worked for Billboard magazine. Okay. And the next day he said, yo, there's two guys up in the Bronx playing a different style of music and talk. He said it's some type of beat. That's when they called it the beat. So, okay, so inside the party... Herc would be playing breakbeat music for the B-Boys, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, so if a party was, say, six hours long, four or six hours long, how much of that was you on the mic? Was you be on the mic a lot or a little bit? I said, this is where I said again where the story was, you know, kind of tainted because I played. Half the time, Herc was at the door. 
people ain't even focused on that. Wow. I played the music most of the night. Wow. Taking nothing away from her. I don't right. want this to feel that way. I'm just letting you know how right. strong I was. Was you playing the breaks or just music? Everything. Was you do? Okay, you I got it from him, right? The breaks. No, I played my own breaks. Like I said, okay. I was more through his stuff with bongo rock, a lot of other stuff, a lot right. of James Brown. I was going the other way. I liked it the highs. Like her liked it the bass. When I'm when I want, when I'm asking you is how much of the average her party was emceeing? Because from my understanding, I, I, it was mostly dancing. Now, once again, to who the who told the story? Who it's really the, the who story. told the story? Right. Okay. Because see, I, then maybe on that level they feel because at one time we start playing in the after hour spot at the same time. This is when Herc picked up Timmy Tim, who was the first guy. They don't talk about Timmy Tim. Hmm. Timmy Tim was like Herc's little son. And Timmy Tim played. Then he picked up Clark Kent, who ran with the Nick with the twins. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? And El Dorado Mike and all them dancing wise. But anyway, we just talking about playing. So right. then we had to platoon it because from nine to four, Timmy Tim would play like maybe from nine to eleven in between. Clark Kent would come in between there. I would come twelve o'clock sometimes because I'll play from 12 to four. So it wasn't that much rapping? It, it, it was till I get on it. I was the only one talking. How long would your segment be? I mean, it, it'll be all night. I'm, all I'm, night, I'm, or I'm, you be I'm MC? While they're break dancing? Whatever they're doing, I call their names up. That's, how, that's what made them stars. Sasha, Trixie. Sasha, Trixie, El Dorado, Mike, Mike. You know, you, you got them all. You got, they're here. The, the Mad Hatter. He was there, but so El you was Dorado, MC Mike, on Mike. while they was dead. Yeah, and I'm selling, and I'm selling weed, okay. and I'm selling weed at the same time. I had a line on the side. And well, I put a big as beat. far as weed, my yeah. thing is let's yeah. all get sober because yeah. okay. I feel like all this weed yeah. and this, yeah. this liquor yeah. is what's really stopping us from being the best we okay. could be we could go as there. a people. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but we were like, too intoxicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's your the story 70, and that's yeah, cool. That's right. the 70s. That, that's that right. That we all, we yeah. all did dip yeah, the no, dab, I mean, selling drugs or whatever. Yeah. But, and the biggest, the bigger picture is for our children. Anything that can take your mind off of being the person that you're supposed to be is not good for you. And they need us to be weak. For our children, try to... Be no, sober, course, man. Be course. sober. Man. I agree. Well, I the best thing. Teach the children. Save the nation. Teach the children. Save the nation. Teach the children. Save the nation. I saw um, a flyer with y'all at Webster PAL. Yeah. Was that in Webster a lot? Yeah, yeah. We play. We opened Webster up. Was That's that your hookup? Was you? Nah, her familiar? played it almost. We played it almost every recreation center. People don't tell that. But see, the, what I'm saying is, back then they was just coming out. We was just coming out the gang era, right? Right, right, right. Just, but it was still gangsters. Nah, nah. They were still. That was, that was, I mean, again, they like were still gangsters. Say, with the part about what's in there, we had sick of guys that stayed in the party. Like we said again, it wasn't this like how guys talking. Right. You know, I'm just saying again, it wasn't like that. I don't know what side of town guys didn't have the money, man. What, was any of your crew gang affiliated? Was y'all nah, gang? Nah, they just was getting money. Your whole crew, whole crew, none of y'all was gang. I, it was the people I knew. Cause you they you said money. you said a minute ago that um the javelins or whoever actually yeah, played yeah, macho yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So y'all was cool with them. We was cool anywhere we kind of went. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Anywhere. And they we respected went, y'all. They respected no gang us, affiliation. Y'all music. We Y'all, y'all bringing everybody together. Wow, okay. Like, like coming to Bronx River. Okay. Anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Herc and his head always had unity. I don't, like I said, I seen it separate, right? Where guys are like, don't mess with them because that's cool, Herc cool. You know, or they want to get at you. This is why I said I had to pull away from that because of the fact everybody want to hate the other one to get at them. They started hating. They started hating. Look at it now. It never stops. It never stops with the vengeance and, oh, you said this, or I said that. Till today. A mm. cat's getting mad at me just for telling the 70s. You wasn't, I'm 66. I'm not offending no. I, I didn't know you was that old. I shouldn't touch I didn't know nobody. You that young. Young. That's my point, my brother. Right. That's my point. You the same age as the original That's space. That's my point. Right. You feel me? Right. I've been here. I was around, man. Mm. I carried myself everywhere. And I respect that drug side. That's why I'm around long. I didn't mess with drugs till I got older. Old enough to be grown. 
Right. So the youngness didn't tear me up. Like you said, it breaks it down. This is why that side, I don't really say it, but I say it because like you just said, I got grandkids. You don't want them to come up that way. You understand? Like I said, I'm, I thought it was legal, man. That's why I ventured that way, man. But I wasn't drug orientated. But we talk in the 70s, man. Right. So therefore, it was all out. What well, you was emceeing, um, do you remember Dolomite? Because I, I heard yes, you say yes, you grew up yes. on, like, you yeah, like yeah, the yeah, Mac. Yeah, yeah, that, that was my... And that, and that, that was a pimp thing? Yeah, that was slick, a pimp, but I didn't want to be a pimp with the lady. But the little slick but lines, I the little lines. The little and, and really, and where I got a lot to back from, quietly, was the last poets. Last poets. You know the one they wrote, Heave a Okay. My pretty. I used to play that over MFSP to show you the DJ side of me. Everybody used to play Martin Luther. I have a dream. Right. I used to play Heave a my pretty, over that. That's, That's the last that. poet. Ah. My DJ. Was well, that your favorite? What about Dolomite or anybody? No, know? like I said, I, I listened to Cass, but like I said, I didn't want to be a pimp. But right. that style, it's Harlem. You're growing up, same way wearing clothes. I wore custom made lizards, man. Yeah. 375. Mm. I wore pepper silk and sauce. Mm. I, wore, I shopped at AJ Lester's, Mr. Tony's, Mr. Ori's, Mr. Crawfield. I had Teller made. When is this though? In the, this in is from 80s? 73 all 72? the way to 76. Yeah. Wow. But who influenced you to, to, to shop? Like, was your crew the doing that or the just the block? Yeah, the, the older block. guys. That was they, a movement. If you couldn't buy AJ Lester's shirt, which was $100, man. The women look at you. If your whole outfit wasn't over a G, man, mm. you couldn't stand next to certain cats. You couldn't mm. get in certain spots. And this is why I said I had cats and dog years, man. When I was 17, I'm messing with cats 25, 30, 40. Mm. So I was around all the people. Again, you know, seeing the right way, the way they was getting money. Right. That's why I said it was a different atmosphere. Cats didn't, they couldn't have lived it. You couldn't have been there. You was too young. Mm. I wasn't supposed to be there. Okay. But we got plugged in. My man's mother, Easy Al, Miss Dottie Praiser, she was there. And she said she had a birthday party, just almost like her sister, and said, I want Coke and Herc to play for me. And mm -hmm. we played, and after that, that nightlife crew was there. Who Herc play at the basketball court? Because of my aunt. So, like, doing Webster and doing the projects and doing all the... Who hooked that up? You you hooked that up? That was up more or? through her, through the, to me it was more through politics, through the, through the center. Like, we did Claremont. So mm -hmm. the people at Claremont hollered at the people over there. Because everybody made money off us. They could say oh, what they want. Okay. Just like we played at Dodge High School. This is how all this really started. We okay. played at Cindy Party at Dodge High School. They had a dance. Okay. We played. Right, but, but by then, everybody's on us now. Like, I got my name, Coke LaRock, we tanned, we tanned the Bronx up. The party started at 6. At 6.30, the police had to come and shut it down because cars are breaking in the window of the school just to be at a cool hurt party. Mm. You know, you'll take a beating to be at a cool hurt party. You'll be on punishment for a month to go to a cool hurt party. Yeah, I heard that. I heard Kurt Herc was, you know, popular. He was the man. But, see, my thing is this, though. What I'm trying to understand is, but my understanding, how I was taught that Mario was the one that started with the schools. Now, you say you was doing Dodge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. It's a shame that we, you know, it was a document. Right, right. No, no. And I respect that. You know what like I'm saying? I said, that's why I said, we got a problem with these places. Like, who's in first, who's in second, or right. third. How did everything develop? I want to give you, I already give you your credit. I want to no, give you your credit like even said, more. And I don't want to take nothing away from nobody else. Right. Either, and I'm trying to understand the schools. Who started that? How did that become a like thing? I said, we did a thing for her sister. I didn't, you know, I don't know what level they was doing it at. Same way we played, we played for Tab, Boat Ride. We played for Dodge. We played at um, um, Rockaway. You played at Tab before you? We played at James Monroe. What, high school over yeah, here, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We did that, that was later, though, right? Yeah, that was really I mean, but all in this kind of the same year. Because, okay. like I said, we played at Dodge. The principal of Dodge knew a boyfriend at Roosevelt, so we went right to Roosevelt. Now they making like they they saying they paying us like two three hundred, oh. but they each made like two three thousand. Oh. So they pocket the money, but that's wow. that's how it went. So they was like, "Yo, get these guys," and mm. you know how to make the money. They, we was doing 60-40. We was doing 60-40 with everybody. 
That's why cats was like, how they got here? Like you just said, how y'all get there? Mm. Mr. Green was in the house. Broken glass everywhere. People pissing on the stage. You know they just don't care. I can't take the smell. Can't take the noise. Got no money to move out. I guess I got no choice. Rats in the front room. Roaches in the back. Junkies in the alley with the baseball bat. I wanted to ask you about, because on, on the uh, interview with Vlad, you said um, the, uh, West Bronx wasn't burning as much as no, the wasn't. South Bronx. Right, right. Really, I think it was the South Bronx. Yeah, yeah, no, that's burning. why I said the East and right, South. Right, you know, right, we, yeah. I just consider East and West. Right. So the West Bronx wasn't burning? Nah, nah, nah. They, they only burnt like the, one or two of the clubs, you know, to get that insurance money. Same way I said with the building. But they wasn't burning the Bronx up. You know, that's something that I hope one of the, uh, y'all um, young guys on the West Bronx can do a documentary on the history of the West Bronx because I think y'all are a little different history, yeah, slightly of different. Of course, of course, I agree. Then, no, I agree to that. Yeah, agree that and it's been neglected. Yeah, no, no. Because for so Once long, again, they, they're you, only putting what they want to put. Right. Uh, who's being told? Right. This is why you don't hear nobody telling my story, but mm. they can. I know they can. Right. Okay. So, um,. The Hevelo, you said it was a DJ called Ronnie D. Yeah. We had a DJ called Ronnie. I don't think that was the same person. He passed away recently. Oh, no, uh, no, Ronnie passed away a I long believe, time ago. A long time ago, if I'm not mistaken. He wanted to battle Herc? He really, everybody wanted Herc. You know, I wasn't in the battling. Because yeah. I felt like this. Most guys didn't come to battle us until we got on top of the. Top. But you said y'all battled Pete DJ Jones early? Yeah, that yeah early? we battled Pete because Pete had Where y'all in the executive playhouse. We battled him in there. And ba battle what? Like, cause he had his system. Herc brought the whole Herculoid. Herc brought every bit of Was Herc doing break beats at that time? Yeah. I, I, I'm not mistaken. He might have put Flash down with him then as a little kid. He had somebody with him, but the system alone, the, okay. the atmosphere, because that was the first time. This is what made me feel hip hop. Uh -huh. When Herc battled Pete, right? right? Herc had every bit of equipment out the house. He ain't never did that before. Okay. And I could see he was different. Okay. You know, that's my man. I could see like, yo, he getting different for this guy, mm -hmm. for Pete. Then like I said, we usually only bring a little bit of equipment out. We brought everything out, every bit of equipment. I mean, you looked at like you was in Sam ass where we used to get some of our equipment from. And um, I'm watching him and I'm like, Man, my man ain't playing. So Herc said, yo, Coop, you with me tonight, right? And I looked at him. I said, yo, I'm always with you, right? I said, but I don't think you need me. So he said, what? I said, I ain't never seen you get like this. He took the mask from Parliament album and cut out the Bootsy mask and put it on. Wow. Said, wow. <laughs> you ready? No. He put you you're in the right place at the wrong time. Mm. That's how he started it. And I said, the music's talking. After that, that was it. So he won. I, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And they forget Pete DJ Jones, his truck stalled, and we had to push him on the highway to get a jump start. So that was like pushing him out the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And after that, we owned the Bronx. Own the Bronx? What about Mario? I'm saying. No, like, we all outside. Yeah, Mario's yeah, more yeah, outside. Yeah, he over here. Yeah, he over he here. He over here. Like I said, okay. Pebble, we on, we on that side. Well, okay, look, then, now this is a question because Kuhur, Kuhur says plenty of times that um, he said, I'm going to do something different tonight. I'm going to do something called the merry go round. Back to myself, I said, well, hmm, if, if they're waiting for this particular break and I have a couple more records that's got the same breakup in it, I wonder how would it be if I put them all together. And I told them, I said, I'm going to try something new tonight. I'm going to try something new tonight. I'm going to call it the merry-go-round. So that means that he was already DJing without doing the merry-go-round. He was just DJing. And then he said, I'm going to do something different tonight. I'm going to do something called the merry-go-round. So that means it was a period of time that Herc was not doing the merry-go-round. And I guess, you know, I can't really ask you. That's something that he would have to answer. Yeah, yeah. Totally. That's because that's his history. I think he named it after, like you said, it, 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 from talking, it sounded like it never was there until he actually felt what he was putting together. Right. Like when, like I said, after he felt it the same way, like I said, certain things. You know? That's why but I asked you. A lot you of that. his stuff, like I said, that total DJ mentality. The same way I, I played it, like we felt K 
catch six records and bring it back to the first one without the people missing the beat. That was the merry-go-round. Yeah. That's why I asked you, what was right, he playing right, with Pete right, DJ right, Jones right. in yeah, 70? Yeah. Well, then that, that's why Pete had to have like two, three people try to, because they couldn't play what we was playing. Mm. They wasn't playing break beats. Okay. They didn't even have nobody talking. Not that that was an issue, but it was an issue because it was part of what we was doing. And because and, on the video, in the interview, you said y'all was at an after hour spot. Yeah. But dudes had big money. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. And, but, but wait, but, but her. Okay, from my understanding, he was dealing with B boys. So yeah. it wasn't B boys in a spot like that. No, this is what I said, my man. Easy Al's just... mother put us on to a party. Uh -huh. And after we was at the party, this is what happened that night in there. I was playing. I'm playing. I'm talking. I'm okay. calling out people names I know. They getting money. I made the person who birthday party it was that night, and his name was Big Smitty, Nicky Barnes' bodyguard. It was his birthday. So I'm saying, put the bottles up for Big Smitty. And I'm hollering. The women are dancing and screaming, yelling. And Big Smitty called me up and wanted to know who I was, introduced myself. And from there on, like we said again, I was the after hour guy. Mm. I would play that from 4 to 3 in the afternoon. This is why I stopped going to the party early. We had to do shifts. Like I said, Timmy Tim start, Clark Kent kind of get in the middle, Herc in between, and I ended. Mm. About an hour. That's why you said when the rapping stopped a little bit to a degree. And then when I get to the after hour spot, it's just me and her. So if all y'all was chipping and doing, why is it only him that get the credit for he it? Took it? He took it. Yeah. That's the downfall. Yeah. You know, I, I love my man. Right. But and it, 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 and see, everybody know the story. I don't go into her because I'm not using him as a stepping stone on wrong or right. But... And it seems like, it seems okay, like, so, you know, I, it seems like not even hurt, but it seems like other people around are trying to connect Jamaican culture to what he did. Yes, I agree. I agree everything you're saying, but well, I, I agree. Man. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Like I said, it's a lot of, a lot of being told that ain't the right way. But right. then it looked like you're coming at somebody, but people were claiming. That's why I said you got a lot of claim jumpers. Okay. Y'all done jump this story on claims, man. But okay. nobody co-signed these claims. Okay. Okay. Because, like I said, I stopped before it started. So how can I talk about it? Anybody? What year you stopped, MC? I stopped, what, what, 73, 4, 5, 6? Between 77 and 78, I stopped. You stopped. I stopped. Mm. So that was before anybody became anybody. And at that time... And we got to cover this because, right. like I said, at that time when you stopped, did you know any Jamaican B-boys or Jamaican? Nah. What about Puerto Rican? Did you know any Puerto Ricans? I knew like a handful. A handful. I knew a handful. That was breakdancing. Was there any Puerto Ricans breakdancing at that time? We were pretty cheap straight up. There wasn't no Puerto Ricans. Wasn't no Puerto Rican. Coming wow. to the parties. You only knew one Puerto Rican B-boy at the time. Johnny Cool. That was and, one and, Puerto Rican. Some people don't even remember Johnny Cool, and uh, when they say Spanish, because he looked at black. So there's some people that I pro probably didn't even know he was Spanish. Mm. But I know he was Spanish because me and him used to talk. Mm. See, and so was there any Puerto Ricans break dancing at that time? One or two, but one or two, one or two. They ain't like how they took it over. They took it over, right? Not nothing against y'all. No, I'm not, not talking against nobody. Joking, no, right. right? It's just the facts right, of history. Right, right. Come on, because like I said, I dance. They couldn't outdance me, mm. but I danced with women. Was you break dancing? I danced with women. Okay. I outdance women. Okay. You know, I mean, that's I, like the hustle. Even before all that. Okay, like okay, said, okay, again, okay. You know, certain dances I didn't do because I felt it was like wasn't for me to do. Okay. You know, the robot. You know, certain things people. The, I mean, I bump, but that's with the women. But certain dances I didn't do. So basically, early hurt parties was dominated by us African Americans. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. And then, like we said, all nationalities started coming. Started coming, right? What's 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 with 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 the unity of music? Right. right. You know, music unified. Music, right, right. Various agree, nationalities. Right, right, right. 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 Okay. Because I had in school, I had different caliber friends. You know, I had a Jamaican friend, but I didn't know where the Jamaican right, guy was. Didn't know he was I didn't know where the Dominican guy was from a Puerto Rican. Right, right. I didn't know a guy was African. 
that was Africa. Right. And that's supposed to be our people. Right. You know? So it's safe to say hip hop began as an African American movement. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. I agree. But two different cultures. And any other any other nationality involved, they had to become like us. Yeah. They had yeah. to yeah. dress like, like us, like walk it, like us, like black like guys us. that lived in Spanish Harlem could talk Spanish. Spanish okay. guys in the Bronx could talk black. Okay. I got a friend called White Chocolate. He's mm. white. He's Irish. But you'll think he's black. Okay. You know, it's, it's who you're around. I had a Chinese friend, Wang Lu, used to take me to Chinatown, taught me how to play ping pong. I became a ping pong champ. Wow. But I couldn't stay in Chinatown after 6 o'clock because of the gangs and stuff in Chinatown. See, I was, I was way before. Yeah, I, I'm 66, man. Yeah, I was yeah. doing this a, a good minute. Wow. Do you think about opening like a GoFundMe or something? I'm down now. My little team Take now. We doing what we doing now. Like I, I had a club. A oh, yeah? guy named my club, La Rocks. We was playing at the West End Lounge. It was the West End Lounge. He had half of the West End Lounge. Okay. We was giving shows. We was giving shows new artists. Okay. Like we got a great new artist. Her name is She Real. You got to oh. Google her, see her. She's hot. She's everything. And like I said, one night, the, a big night there, we had a roast for Mickey Rivers. Mickey Rivers from the Yankees came. Cuban Lynx is a good friend of mine through some people. Mm. And I was doing that for four years. Nobody was supporting me. I wasn't trying. I asked guys, yo, come to my club. Everybody, oh, Coke, give me a G, give me some money. Put mm. me in VIP. Ain't nobody did nothing for me, man. It ain't about paying back. Come on, like, like the interview with you, sir. Uh -huh. We called just through something. And I said, listen, if I can give it to this guy for 50000 why I can't come to you? Just as well. This is truly why I came, my brother. I appreciate it. That's man. truly why I, I came, man. It. You know? It ain't no real price on who or what I talk to. Right. It's, it's the person. Right. From your heart and, you know, I hollered at a couple of people back. They right. said, you're a great guy, sir. Okay. So I'm giving it right back. I'm a common guy. I still work, man. Mm. Hip-hop ain't take care of me. It's giving me a little light now. I'm trying to get my royalty right. Right. And after K. Slate put me on the 110, now the world is opening up to me. Now they open it up, and you see they open it up. Right. Now right. y'all want to know. So now, since y'all know, I'm going to step in my place. I'm number two, and I'm the first father in You're number one, top. man. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm just so used to calling it. Yeah. You no, know, because they always kept me behind somebody. Yeah. You know? But thank you, man, once again. You know, just just thank you, too, bro. Yeah. Always, I man. appreciate you. I'm a, I mean, this is your thing. I mean, booking, baby. The shirts, are you selling the shirts? Yeah, they're getting you ready. We're shirts? getting ready to do them. Okay. We're getting ready to do them. We got three different versions. Okay. All right, so I mean, is there anything else? I think I covered everything I wanted to get into. Um, anything else you want to say? The only thing I say to my team, my partner, Lucky Blaine, my artist, Jack, and Desiree, the Coke Rock booking team, let's go. We opening up. We here. Greeting meets. And I'm the 2010 Hot Towns Culture Cup Award winner. See me in Amsterdam. Mm. Steve Heger. Right. Busy B. Everybody. MC Happy. The team. Right. Everybody. Love hip hop. I'm Coke LaRock. And I'm still on the scene. A true OG to the culture you're in. Okay. Rock's legend. Respect the crowd. And pay homage where it started. We call it the Boogie, Boogie Down. Down.